but what would you have preferred you have done if you had your time again um, for a developing dietitian or I guess if you were talking to yourself eight years ago nine um, years ago oh look I look I, I look back at that now and it's only made me um, more resilient and you know that process I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it probably um, but if I was going through it again and I really wanted to get into elite sport I'd be volunteering and and getting my name out there and um, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's VFL clubs wherever it might be um, getting your name getting your foot in the door doing the hard yards and eventually a position will come up for you yeah what's a good strategy for you know, for dietitians to, to build up and educate look I think it depends yeah. oh look yeah it depends on um, on sort of what you're going into when I started at Collingwood they their program was quite small in terms of nutrition so I had you know a, I suppose a big ability to build on what was already there um, mm. I very much individualized it down to every athlete um, rather than sort of blanket approach which often you know when you've got minimal time in a club or with athletes is that you do take a blanket type approach but very much individualized it down and then yeah speaking one-on-one -on -one with with your colleagues and working in with the medical team and working in with your physios and your strength and conditioning and it's very much a collaborative approach. Take us through sort of your strategy to to make the most of your time when when time is precious when working with elite athletes. Yeah look it's really interesting I suppose when you are a dietitian working outside of a club or in a private practice you'll sit down you'll have an initial consultation with someone for an hour and you may have a review follow-up but with in a club environment as you would know you have so many corridor chats and so you don't mm. really necessarily get to sit down with an athlete for for that amount of time because they're so busy off doing whatever else it might be it could be edits or strength or massage and physio and you know anything else that they're possibly doing um, yeah. so it's really hard to get that time with them um, I definitely try and focus on those younger players so as soon as they do come in you know as soon as a, a player is drafted we're generally meeting with them within the first few days to find out uh, where they're at what their nutrition knowledge is what supplements they're taking um, and and how we can then sort of start that process where are they going to be living how can we educate them about food and nutrition and cooking what would be your advice 15 up until 18 year olds male and female on that approach for you know maybe a coach or or someone or even themselves have identified that they're um, a lot lighter than where they feel like they need to be. Um, what would, what would, how would you sit down with that player and discuss um, getting, gaining, you know, muscle for a footballer? So basically, first of all, to start off at what, what are they currently doing? What are they eating? Um, how much are they getting in? Sort of getting an idea of what their training's looking like as well. So what's their expenditure? Finding, trying to find the balance of what intake is versus expenditure. Um, yep. looking at calories we're looking at protein distribution across the day and then you know a good balance of healthy fats as well so it's not just your calories it's also your protein distribution um, making sure that you're getting the protein intake at the right time so post training session getting something in not skipping meals that's often that I find with so many young athletes what, what type of nigger snacks would be a good example for to like you said that if they're busy and they're moving from house sports to um, afternoon sport and, and that, so they're on the go, what would be sort of your ideal snacks to pack? Um, the nutrient um, Muesli bars, you know, Carmen's protein bars, um, nut bars, up and goes, anything like that to have in the bag, you know, snack like nut packs. There are so many options out there that you can get at the supermarket now. Um, yep. You know, my, I suppose my advice for, you know, school age versus footy like AFL is probably a little bit different in terms of the AFL level we've got to be really careful of the types of now functional foods that have protein added to them we need to be very aware of that in terms of um of wider band substances but yep. you know for at school level not as much um, just choosing really good quality products that are easily available in the supermarket things like Carmen's really easily easy Uncle Toby's you know, you can't really go wrong with brands like that. Is it focusing on changing one thing at a time, you know, maybe a week, or how do you sort of go about a young athlete making those changes? Obviously, because it's habits that they've been doing, like you mentioned, time and time again. Um, so what's a good way from a, from a mindset point of view to, to work on your nutrition? 
yeah, again, it depends on where we're starting. If we're starting with an athlete who has no idea how to cook because they've been living at home with their parents and they've been looking after that for them and they move into state and they, <laughs> they don't know what to do, um, you know, we yeah. start looking at, okay, that, that change is going to be working on how can we better improve um, their ability to provide food for themselves, so cooking and supermarket shopping, that sort of thing. Um, but otherwise it could be something quite small. It could be, okay, let's this week let's work on portion sizes. So we know that you're not consuming enough grains on your plate. Let's try and increase that by half a serve at each meal. You know, small little realistic changes that we can make that are achievable for them. And ideally you want the athlete to set that goal themselves so that they find that, that that's achievable um, rather than me telling them what to do because I've made that mistake in the past and it sort of doesn't pay off. 